My name is David Lance, and I'm the author of Think Like Jesus, Lead Like Moses, Leadership Lessons from the Wilderness Crucible. One of the things that many leaders oftentimes run into is uh, at some point in their leadership authority, someone begins to challenge them because, frankly, they are jealous rivals. Well, that certainly happened to Moses. There's a point uh, that we read about in Numbers chapter 12 where Aaron, uh, where Aaron and Moses, the brother and sister of Moses, rise up against him and basically say, aren't we holy also? Shouldn't we also be sharing in the leadership of, of the people and talking to God? Well, because of uh, God pours out his wrath on Aaron and Miriam for their doing this, uh, Miriam is the one who's taking the lead, and so God causes Miriam to become leprous, white as snow. And although she is healed and uh, is restored uh, to leadership, as well as Aaron, uh, we see from that that God steps in to defend Moses when we're also told in that same story that Moses was the most humble man that ever lived. There was another situation where a, a person by the name of Korah led 250 VIPs of Israel to rise up against both Moses and Aaron and challenge their authority, saying, isn't the entire uh, assembly, the congregation of the people, aren't they all holy unto God? Well, again, here were, were two guys who wanted to, here was a guy, uh, Korah, who wanted to usurp the leadership mantle of Moses and Aaron for his own purposes. And when all it was said and done, God defended Moses and 14,700 people died because one man, Korah, could not work with the boss, Moses. We see from this sort of thing that there are some principles that we can learn about in terms of dealing with rivals. One of the movies that I love that deals with this issue is the movie called Dave. In that movie, there's a, there's a, there's a man who's a dead ringer lookalike for the president who suffers from a stroke. And so Dave comes along and becomes a temporary stand-in for the president. But uh, the president's chief of staff, a guy by the name of Bob Alexander, actually wants to run the presidency for his own benefit. Dave finds out and calls Bob Alexander to, to account. And so one of the things that we learn from that is that leaders are given that position for a temporary period of time and that they must learn to serve the people and not themselves. You know, one of the things that uh, Moses did was allow people to, uh, uh, to guard him, to, to stand up for him. We certainly see that in Numbers chapter 14. When uh, the 12 spies are sent into the promised land to spy out the land, they come back. Ten of the 12 say, we can't win, we might as well give up. But Caleb and Joshua come to Moses' defense, and they say, certainly the Lord is with us. We need to be strong and courageous. And it was those two then who led the children of Israel into the promised land after all the rest had, had died in the wilderness there in 40 years. Another uh, scripture that comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1, where it says that slaves regard your masters as worthy as, of all honor. And also in Philemon 1.16, we read that masters are to regard your slaves as brothers and fellow believers. And so uh, these things talk about the role of, of folks in terms of working with the people that follow them. And so I draw from this uh, the seventh principle of being a godly leader, and that is to resist the desire to justify yourself, allowing God the opportunity to defend you. Well, thanks so much for listening today, and God bless.